So today is gonna to be a beginner's guide to color grading in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're someone who's never color graded in DaVinci before, or you're someone who's experienced in this program, this video is for you. What's up guys, Social Vibes here to help all you content creators grow and your skill sets. So today we're gonna to be diving into DaVinci Resolve. And like I said before, if you're a beginner or if you're someone who's experienced, this video is for you. You can check out all the chapter markers below to skip around if you're a returning viewer to this video and you just wanna to touch up on a few things that I talked about today. So first things first, I wanna let you guys know that I did not go to school for this and so maybe I'm not the perfect person to be teaching this. However, I have clients who pay me thousands of dollars every single month to shoot edit and color grade videos that get broadcasted all over the world. With that being said, my goal in today's video is to show you guys some tools that are already built into DaVinci Resolve 18 and take you as a beginner from start all the way to finish. All right guys, so let's dive in. So right here we have DaVinci Resolve pulled up and I've already created four different sequences that we're gonna go through today. And so the first one that we're actually gonna be tackling is the Charlotte letter. So first let's actually talk about project settings, which is very, very important. So right down here in the corner, we have a gear icon. Opening that gear icon, we're first presented with this screen right here. So the first thing that we actually wanna change or make sure that we have right for our project settings is the aspect ratio. For me, I like to do 3840 by 1920 because most phones today have a pretty long width and so this fills up most of the screen whenever people are watching mobile. Now the next thing that you wanna check if you do the same settings that I do is actually go over to image scale and you wanna set this to scale full frame with crop. Next, we're gonna go over to color manage and we're gonna change our color science to DaVinci YRGB color manage. You can leave the rest of these settings the same. So closing out of that, throw your clips on the timeline and then let's jump over to the color page. And just for you guys who may not know about the tabs, let's just walk through them really, really quickly. So right here is typically where you would import your footage. Over here is where you can like cut everything together. And then right here is the edit page. And then right over here is a color grading page. So those are the tabs that we're using today. If you need to, you can use Fusion. It's kind of a really in-depth program. It's kind of like After Effects if you want to compare it to that, but it allows you to do all these different animations and etc. Now over here we have Fairlight and then we have the Deliver page. So that's a very quick overview, but like I said, now we're gonna jump over into the Color tab. So right over here in the Color tab, we have our first clip. And now if your screen doesn't look like mine, it's probably because you have some of these at the top clicked on or off. So just make sure that you only have these two on so that you can start exactly where I am. So first let's talk about nodes because I know that this over here can look very, very confusing if you're someone who's new to DaVinci Resolve. So basically the way that you can think about nodes is like Photoshop layers. So here we have something called a serial node. And basically what this node does is again, think of it as a Photoshop layer. You can stack things on here and then you can add another node. Now to do that, I hit option S to create a new node. So that's like adding a new layer. And then you can actually stack some things on here but again everything that you do on this node is now affected by the node behind it and so obviously if you delete this node then everything is going to be affected on a node that you just made now if you right click on here and you go to add node you can see that there are actually quite a few other nodes we're not going to be going through those today maybe we'll cover those in a later video but again just for time's sake you can think of these guys like layers. So starting off, what I like to do is actually make three nodes. This is gonna be a very simple node tree. So hitting option S, we're gonna create two more nodes and we wanna make sure that we're over on node three. Now, like I said before, there are actually some really cool things already built into DaVinci Resolve and you shouldn't have to go elsewhere looking for LUTs and things like that. So now we're gonna go over to the LUT tab. LUT stands for lookup table. So right over here, you can see something called film looks. This is already built into DaVinci Resolve and these are actually some very high quality LUTs that you can use to color grade your footage. So today, we're gonna be working with my favorite one. So I've already favorited it right over here. We're gonna click this. And the one that I actually like to use is the Kodak 2383D65. Now, you can go through and use any of these you want to. You're gonna get the same effect that I'm gonna to get today. It's just gonna give you a little bit different colors and maybe some of them are more contrasty than others. So you can play around with these to find the one that you like. 
Going back over to our favorites tab, the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually drop this LUT onto the third node. Now, as you can see, as I click right here beside the three, that I can turn it on and off so that we can see what is done so far. So now I'm gonna actually label these nodes so that we can keep up with what's going on. So this first node, I like to label just LUT. And then this next node is where I'm actually gonna balance everything out. So I'm just gonna put BAL. And then on this last node is where we're actually gonna focus on the temperature. So I'm gonna put temp and sometimes I put slash tent, but today we're just gonna say temp. I think everybody gets the meaning of what this node does. So now this is all we're gonna do on this third node. So right down here, we have a bunch of different options on the way that we can manipulate our image. And then right over here is the different ways that we can actually see our image. So I like to use scopes whenever I'm editing and I actually like to use waveforms. Now right beside waveforms, you get this toggle, which is basically to edit the settings of the waveform. And going under here, I'm gonna show you guys my settings in case you like the way that mines look. Basically what I do is I turn all the way up to brightness. I turn down the grid lines. I don't know how to pronounce this name, but basically it's the grid lines because I don't need to see it that much. And then here are the rest of the settings that I do. You can turn off and on color, but I like to have my color on. So here are the scopes. And again, if you're not seeing this, it's probably because one of these tabs over here is not turned on. So just make sure that this tab is turned on. And then right under here, again, you can select waveform. And like I said, right over here is where we can actually manipulate the image in our primaries. And so if you look at these icons on the top, one, two, three, we're on the third icon and that's the primaries. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make sure that we're actually on node two under our balance tab. And we're gonna go all the way up to 100%. Depending on what footage you have, this may vary. Today, I'm working with S-Log3, S-Gamut3. Now, if your footage already has quite a bit saturation or more saturation than normal, then you may not need to do this. But I'm gonna crank it all the way up to 100% on my saturation. And then typically, I like to go over here to my color boost and put in a number anywhere from five to 15 to add a little bit more color to the image. So today, I'm gonna do 15 and then I'm gonna go right over here to details and give the image a little bit more detail. Again, this is all personal preference. This is just the way that I like to do it. I go in and I add 40 and I vary between 20 and 40 whenever I'm looking at details within my image. And then right over here, we can then come over and check out our image and see what's going on. So I like to stay between the 896 mark and then go all the way down to zero. So as you can see right over here, we're actually going above that, but that's actually because of these lights over here. So we're looking pretty good right now, but if we look at the overall grid right now, we can see that most of it is pretty, pretty low. And we can actually see that in the image by all the dark going on right here where, you know, if we zoom in, we actually can't see much detail within his beard, things like that. So, so what we're gonna do is actually bring up some of those details by just cranking up the shadows just a little bit. And now to counterbalance that, I'm just gonna come back down on my highlights somewhere like that. I'm just gonna come up a little bit more. And I like this image, but as you can see, we actually lost some contrast. So now we're just gonna go right back in here, give the image a little bit more contrast, make it pop a little bit. Now, if you wanna see the image full screen, all you have to do is hit the P on your keyboard and now you can see it full screen. So now what we can do is actually go over to temp and we can kind of balance this out a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is go right down here and actually pull back into his skin is not so orange. And then I'm actually gonna add some green to it, just like that. And basically we're just gonna keep playing with this. And again, just to make sure or to be clear, we're actually working in the temp node whenever we're adjusting the temp intent. So right here is where I actually like this image. And so if we go back over here and we select all these and we just hit Command D, it disables all the nodes. And so we can see a before, we can see an after. I really like this image. And so now all we would have to do is, again, if these are shot in the same scene, which they're not, we could just copy over the settings. The way to do that is to go to the node or is to go to the next clip. Then right over here, we wanna right click, wanna hit apply grade, and that's gonna copy the node tree from 
the one that we actually right click to the new one. So right over here, because we actually labeled all this, and we actually know what happens in each and every node, we can now go in and make our adjustments. Just like that. I really like this image and all we had to do is manipulate one setting. Now following these steps, you can basically copy the same things that I just did over to your other clips as well and follow the same process. So to show you guys exactly what I mean by that, if we actually click over here and we go to gallery and we have stills, what you can do is actually do a screen grab. So if you right click on the image, you can say grab still. Now, if you go back over to your timeline and you select a different sequence, let's say we're gonna do Dripify next. If we go over here to this different sequence and then we go right back over here to our color tab, you can see that that image is still there. Now that's not only an image, it actually holds all the grading details that we had before. And so if we drag this image over to our new clip, now we have all of those same settings that we had before. All right guys, so now we are actually over in a different sequence and I'm gonna walk you guys through this one because there's a super powerful feature that actually just got released with DaVinci Resolve 18 called depth mapping. depth mapping. And it's super important for clips like this where the subject is very backlit. And then as you can see right here, if we look at the graph, this is exactly where she's sitting at. She's pretty darker compared to the image and you can actually see this in the graph right here. All of this is the background and this is her right here. She's quite a bit darker. And so to actually bring her up, it takes a lot. Whenever I actually color graded this clip from Honduras on the trip that I went on, it was super difficult to actually get it to look well. But with this new tool, it's gonna make it very, very easy. Now for this one, we're actually gonna copy on the gray like we would do before. And we're gonna reset our temp and we're actually gonna reset our balance on this one. And so going over here, we're actually gonna just turn back on some of this stuff. And basically what we're trying to do is get it get it pretty close to lit like we would want it to be but we're not going to try to overpower the background with too much light because she's dark we're going to actually try to expose the background in her to somewhat of a medium ground with this new tool you can actually do a lot so if we actually close gallery we can open effects over here and we can just type it in depth map and it's actually going to pop up right here so what you do is you actually drag it and you drop it right here. If you give it a second, it's actually gonna create a map of your image and it's actually gonna separate what's close from what's far. And so if you can see right now, it actually did a pretty good job of recognizing that she is separated from the background, but you can see that there's some other stuff in here. So what we're gonna do is actually go in here and adjust this to where she is the only thing selected. So the first thing that we wanna adjust is we actually wanna change this to manual. So to do that, we're just gonna click adjust map level, which basically turns it from automatic to manual. And we're gonna give it a second to load. And once it loads, what we're actually gonna do is just go in here and fine tune our own settings for this clip. Now I'm just gonna fast forward because I don't want you guys to sit through all of this while I try to select her. But all you're gonna do is mess with these settings right here to get her to be the only thing that's white in the image. All right guys, so right here she is pretty well selected. So now we're just gonna go right over here and we're actually gonna go into this isolation specific depth map. Right under here, we're gonna select isolation and we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna mess with these settings to get it to where she's mostly selected and she's as bright white as she could be. So once you finish making your final selection, all you wanna do is turn off depth mapping which is gonna turn off this black and white image so you can actually see your image. And you're actually gonna go up here and you're gonna turn off effects. Now to actually start editing the selected part that you made just a few moments ago, you actually do not edit the actual map because all it's done is create the selection. So what you actually have to do is go over here and hit option S to create a new node. And then you have to just connect the blue to the blue right here, the blue square to the blue triangle. And now, if you go in here, you're only gonna manipulate what you selected earlier. And so to prove that, we're actually gonna turn her very, very blue. And so as you can see, it turned her completely blue. Now the thing about this tool is that it is very 
taxing on your computer. And so like you saw just a moment ago, it may take just a few moments for it to load up after you've actually made your edits. And so we're gonna go back over here and we're just gonna change that. And just like that, you can see that that helped quite a bit in the image. And so if we just turn off and on this node, you can see how much of a difference it actually made. Now, one important thing to note about this is that just because the image looks good now doesn't mean that it's necessarily gonna look the best after you've already you know, made your corrections and you're playing it back. So what you have to do is make sure that you can put the video in somewhat of a viewing format. And all you have to do is go up here, like I said earlier, and do playback, and you can actually set it to a quarter resolution and that'll help the video play back and make sure that there's no weird stuff going on with the video. And if there is, it's probably because you need to go back and make some adjustments to your layer mask that you made right here. Now I am gonna jump over here into this drone clip because this is one that actually has quite a bit of color in it, which is something we actually haven't graded yet. And so this is our last clip in this entire video and we're just gonna go in and we're gonna knock it out just like we did with the other ones. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna hit Command S, Command S, and we're gonna create our labels just like before. So now if we go over here into our look, you can see that because this image has quite a bit of a quite a bit of color, whenever we throw that on there, it is not gonna look the same at all. And now what we can do is go over here to our balance and we can just see if this is somewhat recoverable. Again, it really just depends on your image that you're trying to manipulate. And so for this one, I actually got it to look somewhat decent with just adjusting the shadows and the highlights. And all I'm gonna do is actually go over here and just, you know, kind of balance it out by taking down some of that contrast. And honestly, this doesn't look too bad to me. So if we do a Command D and we just do a before and after, that's looking pretty good. We're just gonna go over here and we're gonna adjust our temperature a little bit, warm it up quite a bit. It's looking a little bit too blue for me. And then now if we just go in here and we hit before and after, it looks pretty darn good. Now you could go a step further just like we did in the last video and bring back some of these clouds that you see before we actually graded the image by using the depth map but I'm not gonna go into that because we already did it before. But like I said, you can actually do a lot with just a little here in a color tab in DaVinci Resolve. Now, I know this was quite a bit long <laughs> today, but that's mainly because I wanna give you guys a bunch of different examples to show you that this method of doing these three nodes and using the LUTs that already come in DaVinci Resolve is super, super easy and it is very applicable across a bunch of different clips. And the most important thing is just to make sure that if you're gonna do something like this, you shoot your clips with as flat as a picture profile as you can so that you can retain all the information, all those details in post lighter like we did here. And if you actually don't shoot it flat like we have with this drone clip, then you still can do some of the same process to it. You just don't get as much flexibility as you would like. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned how to color grade in a very, very easy way here at DaVinci Resolve. And I'm sorry if some of this kind of flew over your head. It may take you watching this video a few other times to get a grasp of what I was actually talking about. And I'm sorry about the depth map if that was a little bit too much or if it wasn't very much beginner, but I feel like if you can learn these few tools in the depth map that I showed you, you can get super far when editing in DaVinci Resolve 18. Now I do plan on making some more beginner videos on editing in DaVinci Resolve. Maybe next time we'll go over to the cut page and talk about how I like to slice together my footage and the process that I go through. But until then, if you guys have any videos that you would specifically like me to do, then please let me know in the comment section below. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.